In this video, we'll try and understand the politics behind nuclear submarines. Although it is not just limited to submarines, it also applies to aircraft carriers. Then we'll also understand how a nuclear submarine works, what are the challenges behind building one, why the big five countries don't sell them to anyone. We will also understand why privatization of the defense sector is needed and many more interesting stuffs regarding the politics around nuclear submarine. Timestamp is available in case you want to save time or revisit any topic, please do so. Alright then, let's begin. You must have heard this term SSN. It is denoted as a Nuclear Power General Purpose Attack Submarine. The letter SS denotes submersible ship, which is another term for submarine. And the letter N denotes nuclear power. This term is used by the US Navy as a classification symbol, but now it is used almost by everyone for denoting nuclear-powered submarines. Right now, only six countries in the world currently operate nuclear-powered submarines. They are China, France, Russia, UK, US and India. There are three major types of submarines. Attack submarines, ballistic missile submarines and cruise missile submarines. These three types exist both in conventional diesel-powered as well as nuclear-powered submarines. Attack submarines are specifically designed to locate and destroy enemy submarines. These submarines are also designed for conducting surveillance, intel gathering, anti-mine operations, insert troops covertly behind enemy lying and many more. Let me also quickly tell you the difference between ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. The difference is very simple. Cruise missiles fly in almost straight line and at a lower altitude. They have a small inbuilt jet engine that helps the missiles to fly most of the time in the air. In addition to that, these missiles also have inbuilt navigation and they can travel at a very low altitude for avoiding enemy detection. On the other hand, if you look at a ballistic missile, it follows a ballistic trajectory which is in the shape of a parabola. So basically you launch a ballistic missile, it goes in the air, it forms a parabola then it falls on the target wherein the gravity also comes into play. Cruise missiles, they go straight and can perform variety of maneuvers. Now just imagine, if a submarine is capable of firing ballistic and cruise missiles, you can also load them up with nuclear weapons. These submarines are capable of destroying enemy ships while being undetected. You can now imagine how these submarines when loaded with ballistic and cruise missiles, apart from firing regular torpedoes, turns out to be a valuable asset for any nation. That is why countries that have a maritime border are desperate to get hands on these military equipment. Another thing that you have to understand is that ballistic missile and cruise missile submarines operate in a different way and they are expensive. That is why India currently has only one nuclear powered ballistic missile submarine and the rest 15 of them are conventional submarines in which 8 are Russian Kilo class, 4 are German HDWs and 3 Scorpions which are jointly developed by France and Spain. As I've mentioned, India currently operates one nuclear-powered submarine called INS Arihant. It is a ballistic missile submarine. It was launched on July 26, 2009, exactly 10 years after the end of Kargil War. It took India 4 years to build the nuclear reactor of this submarine. Its design is based on the Russian Akula 1 class submarine. Earlier, India had INS Chakra, which was a nuclear submarine. India took it on rent from Russia for 10 years. Now it is back to Russia. So you see, the Big Five did not share any information or knowledge regarding nuclear submarines to India. Russia simply gave it on rent. That means India worked really hard in building its first indigenous nuclear submarine. Now India is planning to add another nuclear submarine called INS Arighat, which will be ready for commissioning next year. So you see, building a nuclear submarine is quite difficult, especially making a stable nuclear reactor. It's dangerous as well as difficult. Nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers are powered by onboard nuclear reactors. Atoms in the nuclear reactor split, which releases energy as heat. This heat is used to create high pressured steam. The steam turns propulsion turbines that provide the power to turn the propeller. Nuclear reactors inside power stations have been powering homes and industries across the world for 70 years. Similarly, each nuclear submarine draws power from its own miniature onboard nuclear reactor. Again, I'm repeating, the key in a nuclear-powered submarine is its high-performance nuclear reactor. They are also considered as the crown jewels of nuclear technology. Only the five permanent members of the UN Security Council have this technology. Now, India has also developed it. But then, it is not that efficient when compared to the American submarines. 
Plus, India needs a fleet of nuclear submarines. Just one or two is not enough to safeguard India's interest in the entire Indian Ocean region. China has around 12 nuclear submarines. Six of them are ballistic and remaining six are attack submarines. UK has 11 in which four are ballistic and seven attack submarines. France only has four ballistic missile submarines. And Russia has 29 in which 11 are ballistic and 18 attack submarines. The US has 68 in which 14 are ballistic and 54 attack submarines. And India has only one nuclear ballistic submarine and zero nuclear attack submarine. I'm only talking about nuclear submarines and not conventional ones. So India needs an entire fleet of nuclear attack submarines to safeguard its interest in the Indian Ocean region. Now try to understand this problem. Building a nuclear powered submarine itself is a difficult task. And let's say once you have built it, the next stage is achieving efficiency. After that quantity, you need to build plenty of them. These machines are expensive, but at the same time they are a necessity for a country like India that has such a long maritime border. This technology is helpful for doing regional as well as international diplomacy. Because imagine this, the country that has more nuclear submarines, that country will be able to show more strength as well as presence in the oceans. Conquering land, sea and air is the ultimate political aspiration for any nation. The Big Five continuously does that. They constantly improve their defense technology in achieving their strength on land, sea and air. So if you want to be a superpower, then you need to start acting like one. And you need to constantly innovate just to have an upper hand over your adversaries. In India's case, there are so many internal as well as external hurdles. Even if India develops the technology, then comes costing, budgeting, passing bills in parliament, bureaucracy, cooperation and many more. So you see, at every level there are challenges. Plus, India is a democracy. You know how difficult it is to get everyone on board. Especially if it is for a good cause. That's even more difficult. So all these things are there. So my point is, to become a superpower, there are more domestic internal hurdles. Anyhow, so India needs an entire fleet of nuclear attack submarines to safeguard its interest in the entire Indian Ocean region. Now, if you see in general, some nuclear submarines have a single nuclear reactor. But Russian submarines have two. And even the United States nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers are powered by two reactors. But then if you look at the USS Enterprise, which is now a decommissioned naval aircraft carrier, it had eight nuclear reactors. That too it was launched in 1960s. Imagine, back then US had that level of technology. That is why if you look at these big five countries, they have not reached where they are simply by being good obedient nations. They are ruthless in their aims and objectives. Anyhow, the point is building a nuclear powered submarine itself is a difficult task. Just imagine making it more efficient and innovating further is totally next level challenge. That is why privatization of the Indian defense industry is very much needed. And I'll tell you more about it in few minutes. Anyhow, India as of now has one ballistic missile firing nuclear submarine or SSBN, INS Arihant. Another one INS Arighat which will be ready for commissioning next year. As of now, India does not have a single nuclear powered attack submarines. But hopefully by 2025, that will change. Few minutes back, I've told you that the key ingredient in a nuclear powered submarine is its high performance nuclear reactor. They are also regarded as the crown jewels of nuclear technology. Only the five permanent members of the UN Security Council have this technology. Now India has also developed it. But then it is not that efficient when compared to these big five countries submarines. So naturally these are top secrets and these countries may not want to share the knowledge and information because that's what gives them a competitive edge in controlling geopolitics of the world. You must have noticed from past couple of years India is getting close to United States. But then United States always refuses to even talk about sharing or selling nuclear subs to India. In a response, US had said this, and I quote, We do not even share that kind of technology with even our closest allies like UK and France. That's what US tells India every time India brings up the talk. Please don't think UK, France doesn't have their own nuclear submarine technology. They have their own, but it is not as sophisticated as United States. So you have to understand this. Nuclear submarines are regarded as the most technologically complex military platforms ever built. They are capable of tremendous underwater speed and unlike conventional diesel electric submarines, nuclear submarines don't need to surface to recharge their batteries. 
nuclear submarines are capable of being submerged as long as the crew inside has food supplies. Nuclear submarines can also carry twice the weapon load when compared to conventional submarines and move twice as fast. So basically it is cost effective for any country to own nuclear submarines. And then if they are efficient and top class, then the value increases further. You see, all these are good stuffs and every powerful country wants that kind of technology in their hands. Currently, the US has over 68 operational nuclear submarines. It has more nuclear submarines than Russia, France and UK put together. US nuclear submarines use the most sophisticated nuclear reactors. For example, the newest Virginia class nuclear submarines have reactors that use bomb grade uranium that are enriched to over 90% purity. They are designed to operate for 33 years without refueling. Can you imagine that? That is why the US always refuses to discuss any possibility of sharing knowledge and information on these kind of sophisticated naval nuclear reactors. But I also believe US will sell this technology when they have advanced further. For example, if currently US submarines can operate for 33 years without refueling, then they will innovate for 50 years and sell the 33 years design on certain terms and conditions. That is how they build their allies and maintain their edge. You must have heard in the news that India is looking to design and build a fleet of six nuclear submarines fitted with a new nuclear reactor. 95% of the nuclear reactor's content will be built in India. The proposal was put before the Cabinet Committee on Security for approval this year but even if it is approved, the first unit is not expected to enter service before 2032. And India may also require foreign assistance for this project. United States will not help. So India might approach either from traditional partner Russia or from France. Recently, if you remember, Australia cancelled their submarine deal with France. Those were not nuclear submarines. Australia went into a trial alliance with UK and US called AUKUS. The US has said they will help Australia in building nuclear submarines. Now try to understand this. US is not willing to sell nuclear submarines and knowledge to India, but it is giving it to Australia. And if you see, Australia does have stake in the Indian Ocean region. Anyhow, France was really angry with Australia. Emmanuel Macron even called PM Modi and discussed about it. Many believe that India and France may end up signing a deal, wherein India might buy nuclear submarines from France. So the point is, India is looking forward to build indigenous nuclear submarines, which is part of Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative. But that will require a lot of time. Plus, India will be needing assistance from either Russia or France. UK and US are out of question. That is why it is always good to be self-reliant and self-sufficient. You can't trust anyone or depend on anyone in geopolitics. Atmanirbhar Bharat is absolutely necessary. So moments back I said United States Virginia class nuclear submarines have reactors that use bomb grade uranium that are enriched up to 90% purity. You see enriching U-235 to its highest purity is another challenge. Along with that you also need a complete range of nuclear reactor components. You need very high skilled facilities that can host state of the art design, manufacturing, inspection, assembly and testing. All these blueprints are not available on the internet and you can't go around stealing it. These are highly classified national secrets. Recently, you must have seen in the news that Iran has openly said that it is capable of enriching uranium to over 90% purity. I don't know how Iran is able to do it. Most of their facilities are hidden and top secret. Every now and then we hear in the news that so and so facilities have been discovered, etc, etc. That is why US and Europe constantly put sanctions on Iran. So anyhow, enriching U-235 to its highest purity is a challenge. See, reactors in a nuclear-powered submarine are typically fueled with uranium. Natural uranium mined from the ground consists mainly of an isotope called uranium-238, mixed with small amounts of 0.7% of the key isotope uranium-235. For the reactor to work, the uranium fuel has to be enriched to contain the desired proportion of the uranium-235. For submarines, this is typically about 50%. The degree of fuel enrichment is a crucial factor in maintaining a chain reaction that gives a consistent safe level of energy output. The higher the purity, better will be the energy. I'm not saying India wants to reach 90% purity, but any kind of increment will definitely result in better level of energy output. More energy output means the submarine can perform more functions. A highly efficient nuclear power reactor will make a submarine operate at high speed for longer periods. 
That's why they are top secret and expensive when compared to conventional diesel electric submarines. Unlike conventional fuel combustion, nuclear reactions do not require air. That means nuclear submarines can stay submerged for months at a time. That means it will give more stealth capabilities for remote deployments, for gathering crucial intel on your enemies. That is why United States refuses to give India this kind of technology. There is a company called BWX Technologies, which is a private company that manufactures naval nuclear components and reactors for United States since 1950s. This private company makes that kind of state-of-the-art design and sophisticated components which other countries are dying to get hands-on. This also brings up a big question, why defense sector needs to be privatized? Even India has to do it. All of United States defense production happens in the private sector. A lot of people have this concern, what if there is a leakage or black marketing in private sector? No, it cannot happen. Everything is tightly controlled. Do you think this BWX technologies sell their technology to anyone else apart from the US government? No, they don't and they can't. Another example is look at Boeing. They make military fighting and surveillance aircrafts for the United States government. Many of the high-end systems and components for some of the Boeing's most advanced products are being manufactured in India. That doesn't mean India has the blueprints and it can steal Boeing's manufacturing secrets. Exports, sale, distribution, procurement is very tightly controlled and it is done under active oversight of the government. So please don't think that businesses of these high-end top secret technologies are done casually. Forget about this, it is so difficult to copy KFC's recipe of spices and herbs that they put on their chicken. You can't figure out the exact ratio and ingredients. KFC has maintained its secrecy, right? Why do you think the private defense manufacturers can't do it? There are proper structures and procedures everywhere. So defense sector needs to be privatized. Then only state-of-the-art technologies can be manufactured. See, it is very simple. Defense industry is highly technology-driven. And it is the private sector that adapts itself better to rapidly changing technology. I have a video on privatization. In that, I have explained some important points why privatization is needed. Watch that video, you will understand what I mean. So anyhow, defense sector needs to be privatized. So the problem with making a sophisticated nuclear reactor for a submarine is that it is complex and quite frankly, it is difficult. And that is why they are regarded as the crown jewels that are available only to the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. And India might break into that club anytime. It will happen anytime. Just wait and watch. India has money, it has a world-class navy, it has the political will, and India's foreign policy has started gathering the global spotlight. Anyhow, I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.